who he messed him up good. This whole strange adventure got to start late one night when I was sitting in my study reading from Life magazine, and I turned the page, and as I did, I began to cry. They were all teenagers, members of a gang. Beneath their picture was the story of how they had gone into Highbridge Park in New York City and brutally attacked and murdered a young 15-year-old polio victim named Michael Farmer. They went away wiping blood through their hair, saying, We messed him up good. The story revolted me. It turned my stomach, but I was dumbfounded by a thought that sprang suddenly into my head as though it had come from somewhere else. Go to New York City and help those boys. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which starts as the smallest seed in the garden, but grows to be the largest of garden trees. The promise of God's victory is seen clearly throughout scriptures, as Psalm 72 verse 8 says, And he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Our duty as Christians is to advance that victory even into the darkest places. This is the true story of one such victory. The cross and the switchblade by David Wilkerson. Lord, if I am here in New York on your errand, then you must guide me. Now I would make my move. I started making inquiries around New York. What is the greatest problem boys have in this city? Lonesomeness. <laughs> Lonesomeness in a city of eight million people. Those kids grow up surrounded by hate and fear. They've got to start over. They've got to be surrounded by love, but uh, that's impossible. Well, um, what are the toughest, hardest gangs in town? Time and time again, two names recur. The Chaplains and the Mau Maus, both with their turf in the Fort Greene projects. Early one Friday morning, I picked up a friend of mine, a trumpet player named Jimmy Stall, and together the two of us drove over the Brooklyn Bridge and into the teeming brick and glass jungles called the Fort Greene projects. We began our experiment. Well, um, what do you want me to play? Why not Onward Christian Soldiers? <clears throat> Suddenly, windows flew open and, and heads popped out. Soon, the children began to swarm, and then after, the teenagers. God loves you all as you are. He knows your hatred and your anger. And he knows that some of you have committed murder, but God also knows what you are going to be in the future, and not only what you have been in the past. All right, now, I want to talk to your presidents. If you are all so big and tough, you don't mind coming up here and shaking hands with a skinny preacher. Israel, Nikki, you're up. Come on, you're not going to chicken out. Israel, president of the Mau Mau. Israel was nice of boys I'd met. He stuck out his hand and shook mine like a gentleman. Nikki, on the other hand, was something else. That was the hardest face I had ever seen. How do you do, Nikki? Go to hell, preacher. You don't think much of me, Nikki, but I think differently of you. I love you, Nikki. But as I said it, I thought to myself, it wouldn't do a bit of good. Not for you, Nikki. There's no love on earth that could reach you. Later that night, I had the opportunity to meet with a group of people from different churches and tell them about the way that God seemed to be leading me into New York streets. Before that meeting was over, those 65 people came forward with a plan of action to hold a mass rally for teenagers at St. Nicholas Arena in New York City, where I could address many gangs at once. It was almost time for the meeting to begin. The auditorium was filling up on this final night of the rally. I walked to the center of the stage. Hey, Davey! Hey, Davey, here I am! It's Israel! I told you I'd come and I'd bring my boys too. I turned to smile and as I did, my eyes met with the rock hard gaze of Nikki Cooper. We're going to do something different tonight. We're going to ask the gang members themselves to take up a collection. They'll bring the money right over here behind this curtain and up onto the stage. May I have six volunteers? 
all along. I've been wondering what was in this for him. Now I saw that he was a money grabber like everyone else. I figured he didn't have any good sense. Anyone could see that there was a door back there. I was on my feet in a second. I pointed out five of my boys and we piled down there quick. Here's my chance to make him look stupid. Well, we weren't that horrible now. I have 16 stabbings to my record and am known as a vicious knife fighter in New York. If I didn't like what someone put in, I stood at the end of the row shaking the curtain and the kids dug deep. Well, then we met down behind the tree. There was a door. It was my door. I could see the street lights and I heard a water truck spraying the street. Back inside, some of them were laughing. They knew that we were home. And I just had a funny feeling. Suddenly, I knew what it was. That preacher trusted me. That never happened in my life before, and I stood there, my boys watching. Back inside, I could hear they were giving him a hard time. They were shouting and stomping, and he was having to stand there facing them, trusting me. Boys, we're going up on that stage. Here's your money, preacher. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Thank you. What am I doing? What am I doing? You come near me, and I'll kill you. You hear me? I said I'll kill you. You could do that. You could do that, Nikki. You could cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them out in the street, but every piece would still love you. No one in my life ever told me that before. I went back to my seat and I was thinking harder than ever before. He started talking about the Holy Spirit and how he could get inside people and make them clean. He said it didn't matter what they've done. The Holy Spirit could get inside them and make them start new like babies. Suddenly I wanted that so bad. It was as if I was seeing myself for the first time. All of the filth and the hatred and the foulness like pictures in front of my eyes. You can be different. Your life can be changed. I want that. I need that. All right, Roy. There is nothing more that I can do. If you want to reach the heart of any of these boys and girls, it will have to be through your presence. Have it your way, Lord. Have it your own way. As I continued to pray, Nicky Cruz got out his handkerchief. All right, you felt him. He is here and he is in this room and he has come especially for you. If you want to have your life changed, now is the time. Stand up and come forward. The search forward was contagious. More than 60 boys from other gangs followed the Mau Mau's. I looked to see if Nicky was among them, and he was. I was the first one to the rail. I kneeled down and I said the first prayer of my life. Dear God, I am the dirtiest sinner in New York. I don't think you want me. But if you do want me, you can have me. As bad as I was before, I want to be that good for Jesus. I'm giving my heart to God, Davy. It began with the tears. Nicky cried the bitterness out, and he cried the hatred out, and he cried out the doubts and the fears too. And when he was all through, there was room for the kind of love a Christian knows. From that day on, Nicky Cruz had a love that was his for always. And he taught me a lesson that was mine for always. We humans can work hard for each other, and we will work, and we must work, but it is God, and it is only God, who has the power to heal. Pastor Nikki Cruz started as a hardened gang leader. 
but he would go on to found three Christian ministries, become the director of Teen Challenge, publish several books, and ultimately impact thousands upon thousands of lives for Jesus Christ. That is the power of the gospel. That is the advancement of the kingdom, and that is the duty of every soul that calls himself a Christian. And in fulfilling that duty, you too will find that the cross is mightier than the switchblade.